One of the things we're going to be doing over the next couple labs and dealing with raster data is working with our geoprocessing environments. So let's talk about geoprocessing environments. Uh, these are settings that are additional parameters that are going to affect the results of your tools. They're different from the normal tool parameters or the normal um, options in the tools dialog box. It's not going to pop up automatically. Um, you, these are values that you set once using a separate dialog box and uh, each tool will follow those rules. Changing the environment settings is a very uh, common thing you'll be doing for uh, raster analysis and other geoprocessing tasks. It may make your life a little bit easier. So we can, there are two options for setting your environments. You can set environments for the entire application, your entire arc map window and all the tools you're running. And you can set them for a single tool. So let's start by looking at the um, geoprocessing environments for uh, our entire application. So to first, to get to your overall geoprocessing environments, you click on the geoprocessing um, uh, drop down menu on the, the standard toolbar and we're just going to head down to, you guessed it, environments. So there you can see here we have a whole list of environments that we can set um, and let's see some of them you're going to be familiar with like setting the workspace. Um, here I've set my output um, for all of my data to go to the geo database for this lab. In our Python lab, we set a workspace for our Python script, telling it where are the data path to where to find the data and the data path for where to save our new outputs. You can set your output coordinates by setting it to um, a specific coordinate system if you want all your outputs to have the same thing. You could set it to a specific layer if you wanted to. Your choice. Um, and there are a whole bunch of other options that we'll be working with, um, in particular this raster analysis. Um, so let's look specifically at the raster analysis tools or environment settings. Um, there are two uh, parameters within raster analysis environments that we can set. Um, you can see cell size and our mask. These are the two that I'm mostly interested in. For cell size, this is where um, you're telling all of the tools that are creating raster data. So for us this week, we're looking at spatial interpolation, all of our interpolation tools, the outputs, you're setting a cell size. So this could be like today, we're going from point data to raster data using interpolation. So we can set that cell size, we can define that resolution. Um, or if you have raster data that maybe you're uh, using raster calculator or some other analysis on, you can um, choose one of your raster layers, which we don't have yet, um, or the default option will always just be to the coarsest of your input rasters. So let's say we have one raster that's five meter and two that are 10 meters. Um, all of the default would be that 10 meter or that coarsest resolution. So you can change this just by typing in. So I have mine set to 30 meters. I could set it to 100 meters, 10 meters, one meter whatever you were interested in. Um, you also could um, change the mask. So our mask setting is our, um, well, setting an analysis mask, as it says, means that um, processing will only occur in locations that fall within the mask and all locations outside will be assigned no data. So this is not a raster clip tool but it is a way for you to define where you're doing your analysis. So we can see here that I've set my mask to the SRO counties, which are the Southern Regional Office counties for this weather data. So that means even though I have points outside of these counties, or um, if I just wanted to do an analysis for a specific county, I could pull up a specific county as well. Um, the output is only going to be defined by these borders. So all the cells that you're creating will only be within um, within that um, border of these counties like you're seeing here. So nothing will go outside of the counties um, or whatever you set as your mask. So if you're looking for, if you're wondering why when you complete analysis um, and there's data outside of your area of interest, or maybe that doesn't reach to your area of interest, try setting that mask. 
All right, the other thing I wanted to show you was how to set an environment for a specific tool. So let's search for that IDW tool. We'll open our spatial analyst option. So you can set tool level environments. You may have clicked this button by mistake in the past. So let's say for this tool I wanted to change where I was saving it, or for whatever reason IDW I wanted to change um, the cell size, or I wanted to change um, where I'm saving it, the processing extent, maybe the coordinate system. I can also set all of my environments for each individual tool. Any tool level setting that I create, as it says, um, are applied to that single run of the tool and overrides any of our program or application wide or ArcMap wide settings. Um, for many of our, uh, for many of your tools, you may find that I'm not really sure why, but sometimes I tend to set environments in the, for the application and they don't transfer to the tool. So sometimes if it's I'm not getting the output I want. Maybe I'll go into this specific tool and change that mass to the county or change, oops, change the cell size. Or if I want to test it out, I'll just test out what is a different cell size output look like. If I change it to 100 um, meters, how is that going to change um, my individual uh, output? I could just test it this one time. So tool level tools will, um, sorry, tool level environments will override uh, program level environments. So hopefully that kind of clears it up, what, how you can set environments and why we use them.